Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon. Let's have some fun. Story brought to you by Deanne. Looking around the secondhand shop, I spotted a pretty solid blue dress that looked about my size. I'm not the easiest person to fit a dress for either. At six and three inches and almost 300 pounds, not to mention my being a male, is quite a deterrent for finding something pretty and feminine. Still, since I was a kid, I had a fascination for them. The soft fabrics, the pleasing color combinations, and the lovely patterns to those color combinations were too enticing to resist. This simple blue dress beckoned to me from a dozen feet away. I went over to the rack it was hanging on and ran my hand over the fabric. As my hand touched the shiny, silky blue fabric, I knew that this dress was mine. I picked it up from the rack and verified the sizing, a 28. I wish I could knock that down a bit, then headed for the cashier. I paid the bill and took it home, eager to try it on. I got home and quickly went to my room, avoiding my mother's demand for attention for a few moments so I can put away my package. I've been living with my mother for the past few years. I'm just under 30 years old, helping her out with the things her arthritis won't let her do anymore. I start my laundry so I'd have something to wear to work the next day. Then I retreated into my inner sanctum affectionately known as my bedroom. I started going through my feminine wardrobe, built up carefully over the years to keep my cross-dressing habits out of my mother's view. She's so closed-minded about alternative lifestyles, I could just cry sometimes. I pulled out my matching black nylon bra and panty set, then reached up onto the closet shelf and pulled down the boxes with my breast forms. After laying the items out on my bed, I started the dressing process by shaving, then taking a nice warm shower to clean all the slimy sweat off of my body. After the shower, I took a relaxing bath with some oil I procured at Victoria's Secret while getting my mother her Christmas present. I came out of the bath smelling and feeling as feminine as I had in ages. Crossing the hall to my bedroom with the towel wrapped around my waist, I smiled to my reflection in the mirror at the end of the hall. After I closed and locked the door to my room, I tossed the towel aside then turned to the open closet door to get the last of my foundation garments, a slinky purple nylon slip. I put on the various pieces of clothing. With great care, I reached into the closet to pull out my new dress, hanging from a matching padded hanger. After taking the dress off the hanger, I step into the dress and work it up over my belly so I could put my arms into the short sleeves, three, four length actually, Long sleeves don't usually work with me as they're proportioned differently from my frame. I reach to the rear zipper and carefully work it up, making sure it doesn't snag on the foundation garments. As the zipper tab comes to a stop, I felt a wave of nausea wash over me. I looked around the room and see everything has been slightly altered somehow, as if it all had been slightly enlarged. It wasn't by very much, but to me it was noticed. That was when I happened to look at the mirror mounted on the wall behind the door. Reflected back was one of the most stunning young ladies I had ever seen. Right away, I knew the logic of assuming I had changed had been correct. But I was more curious as to how it happened. Of course, I confirmed the looks of the body by touching the more sensitive areas. Walking out into the hall, I not only noticed that I was smaller than I used to be, but that my clothes had shrunk to fit my new form perfectly. The heels on my feet felt so sexy and comfortable, despite what their reputation may be. I felt my hair, now long enough that it fell to my waist, despite it being fairly curly at that point. The mirror at the end of the hall displayed my supermodel's physique sashaying toward and away from it, with a smile playing across my face. The clip-on earrings I wore sparkled with their silvery sheen as I passed under the lone light bulb in the hallway, as did the dainty gold necklace with its heart-shaped pendant disappearing under the neckline of my dress. My fingernails also sparkled with a flashing red flare of color, showing off what appeared to be perfectly manicured nails with layers of red lacquer over them as opposed to my stubby, half-bitten former nails. I walked into the bathroom with a satisfied click of my heels on the white polished tiles. I just had to see my face closer and in brighter light than the dim bulb in the lone lamp in my bedroom or the more distant harsh light in the hallway. 
The fluorescent tubes in the bathroom sputtered to life, and I walked up to the small counter space by the sink. I leaned in close to the glass, giving myself a man's eye view of my new cleavage. I turned my concentration to my face, which was as feminine in form as I could have ever imagined on any woman. Soft, kissable, pouty lips smiled sweetly, showing off the barest hint of dimpled cheeks. My eyes, formerly a pale blue, had taken on a deeper, more intense hue, while my lashes seemed to stretch out a mile with a gentle upward curl that could almost touch my hot, arched eyebrows. Even my teeth, which used to be stained by the remnants of a dare at summer camp years and years ago, lighting sulfur-tipped light anywhere matches off of my teeth, one of my more lasting instances of stupidity, were now bright, pearly white, and perfectly formed. I went back to fetch my purse from my bedroom. I was looking for my wallet to see just how far this change went. Obviously, it was localized to my person as my bedroom didn't change, but the clothes I wore did. I took out my wallet and found my driver's license, and right away I saw the difference. My name and social security number were the same, as was my hair and eye color, blonde, blue as it always, though the hair used to be a bit darker and the eyes lighter. Apparently, according to my changed ID, I was now 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighed in at a scant 116 pounds. The biggest thing I noticed was that I was still almost 30 years old, which made me giggle for a few moments. I put my ID back in the wallet and then replaced it in my purse. I added my keys and some makeup from my secret drawer of femme accessories. I also spritzed myself with some perfume before adding it to the contents of my purse. After taking a few moments to gather my courage, I decided to go shopping. I walked out to my car and drove to the nearest mall, all of about a mile and a half away. I parked in a faraway corner so I could walk a little extra distance. After all, I did have to watch my girlish figure now. Everyone else who was watching it as well was all optional. I went in via the food court entrance, where the largest congregation of people would be, I wanted to see what the reactions would be to my supermodel's body. As I approached the glass entry doors to the mall, a man on his way out of the building held the door open for me. He waved me through with a flourish of his free hand while he executed a slight bow. I thanked him with a wide, beaming smile and walked through the portal. The concierge's desk stood at the other end of the short hallway between the entry doors and the food court. While I purposely kept my pace to a slow walk, despite my anxiousness to explore the whole mall, I made it a point to casually look through the windows of the restaurants on either side of the walkway. My gaze fell upon many men eyeing me with appreciation apparent in their faces, not to mention a few with their tongues hanging out of their mouths. It was as if they've never seen a girl before. I circled the desk and studied the tourists' literature in their convenient niches at various points around the glass-topped circular desk. The clerk on duty smiled at me and gave me a friendly greeting, asking if she could help me with anything. I politely said, no thanks. Since it was the first time I really spoke in this womanly body, I was pleasantly surprised at how hot, melodic it was, making me wonder what I would sounded like when I was singing. She took the business card she had displayed in an inconspicuous display. She scribbled something on the back of the card, then handed it to me. She said that if I ever needed anything, that I should give her a call. I gave her my name and number in return, saying that if she ever wanted to get together outside of her job, I'd love to see her again. I could tell she was excited because she was turning a cute shade of red. I looked at what she wrote for her phone number before I teasingly inserted it into my bra cup, at which point she gasped with astonishment. I just gave her a smile and said that this way, I won't lose it. As I continued my way through the mall, I was surprised at the ease with which I had acted so feminine, not to mention seductively. Of course, that was with another girl that I was such a flirt, and I was serious about wanting to see her outside of her job. If this transformation was a permanent thing, I think I might have found a lesbian lover. But my guess, or should I say my hope, was that when I took off this dress, I would change back. In the meantime, I'll just have some fun looking through the stores. I looked at my wrist for my traditional watch and realized I never got around to buying an appropriate watch for when I decide to dress up. 
I bravely walked up to a young man nearby and politely asked him what time it was. Luckily for me, he was equally polite as he smiled, then looked at his watch. He gave me the time. Then he got brave and asked me if I was waiting for my boyfriend. I blushed slightly and said I wasn't. He responded by asking if I had plans for the evening, since it was about an hour before the mall closed. I shook my head in a negative, and he asked if I would give him the honor of being my escort to dinner tonight. I thought it over for a moment, then decided I could always use a free dinner as long as there are no strings attached. I said as much, to which he agreed, saying he just wanted to get to know a pretty lady like me. He put out his arm and I rested my arm in it for the duration of the journey out another entrance to the mall to his car, where he drove me over to my car, and from there I drove to a nearby Denny's where we had agreed to meet. Jim, my escort, was waiting at the door to the restaurant when I arrived. We grabbed a booth and I ordered an iced tea. He ordered a couple appetizers and some coffee to drink. We spent a couple of hours just getting to know each other. I told him about my life, changing only the gender-specific instances that I was telling him, like Boy Scouts became Girl Scouts, and my few times of referring to my boyhood became my childhood. We had quite a few things in common as we regaled each other with our personal tales, and he admitted that he was attracted to me as a person. At the end of our evening, he offered me his number, and I gave him mine as well, saying that I'd like to see him again as a friend, but that if there's a romance to be had, I would prefer it to evolve from a strong friendship first. To my surprise, he agreed, saying that it was good that we didn't rush into things. He continued by saying his last girlfriend burned him by dumping him just after he slept with her, and that the totality of the relationship was a bit under two weeks, and that the emotional scars were still somewhat fresh. We parted for the evening with a hug and a kiss on the cheek. I drove home and saw that the lights were out, which meant either my mom was asleep or out still. I circled the complex and checked our assigned parking spot just to make sure her car wasn't there. I parked on the street by the closest entrance to the complex. Trying to keep my heels from making an inordinate amount of noise, I walked to the door and unlocked it quickly. I opened the door to a dark room so I knew that mom was out. I turned the outside light on and closed the door behind me, locking it out of habit. I turned on the living room light, which illuminated the small dining area as well. Propped up on the table was a note saying that mom was out for the evening to one of the local casinos and that she would be home late. I retired for the night to my bedroom after tossing the few pieces of clothing from the washing machine into the dryer. I looked at the various hangers and boxes for my FEMA wear. Then I muttered to myself that I might as well see if I change back by taking off the dress. I unzip and slowly work the dress off my body leaving me standing in a bra and panties, slip and garter, hose and shoes and jewelry. And underneath all that, I was still completely female. Before I went any further, I put Joan's business card in my purse, thinking that she might be an interesting girlfriend since I apparently was going to stay feminine for the rest of my days. I hung up the dress and decided I should take a shower before I went to sleep for the night. I quickly stripped off the rest of my undergarments and stood in front of the mirror wearing my necklace and earrings, admiring the streamlined feminine person I had become. I absently unclipped my earrings and placed them in my improvised jewelry box. It used to be a tackle box, but I never was a fishing type. Then I reached to unclasp the necklace and put it away as well. As soon as I had pulled the chain away from my neck, I felt another wave of nausea wash over me, and my male hands finished putting the necklace away. A smile crossed my face as my male body with all the undesirable qualities. I took a shower and was in bed well before my mom got back from the casino. My dreams were filled with fantasies, or Jim and Joan and I was girlfriend to both of them. I awoke with a memory of a dream where I was a bride to both of them in a three-way wedding ceremony where I married Joan, then Jim promising each that I would love them as a proper wife should. At work that day, I got message from both Jim and Joan. At least they asked me to call them back when I get a chance. My fantasies involving both of them almost drive me to distraction while I'm carrying out my duties. 
I get home from work about a half hour before mom does quickly stripping off my clothes and putting on my blue dress. I'm dialing even as the familiar wave of nausea passes over me, letting my sexy, sultry inner woman out. I have to split the time available between my two suitors who want to get together with me, if not tonight, then over the weekend at least. I tell Jim that I already have plans for this weekend with one of my girlfriends, Joan, of course, but I can see him next weekend if he wants, which he does. Joan wants to take me shopping at the mall, an employee's only sale, she says. The catch is that it occurs after mall hours. I agree, saying that I could use a few new outfits for my wardrobe. She says she's looking forward to seeing me. I get off the phone a few minutes before my mom usually gets home, so I quickly strip off the dress, bringing back my naked male form. I put on a pair of shorts and hang the dress up again, shaking my head in near disbelief that I have a date with a girl. A shopping date as a girl is the unbelievable part, though. And what happens afterward is anybody's guess. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for early access and exclusive content. <laughs>